I tell you what, it's good to be free, amen? Man, how many appreciate what Jesus did for you? All right, how many need freedom today? All right, well, we all do, amen? It's a daily process. So give it up for our worship team. Good job, guys. We, we want to do something kind of cool here. I'm going to call Colette up. But we want to pray for the children. So you go ahead and have a seat there. And we want to get all the kids up front. I'm going to turn it over to Colette for just a minute here while they switch around. So just had the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and it's a good thing for us to recognize our children here. Um, I worked with kids for many, many, many years, um, and I've seen the blessing of what they grow to be. Um, I know several who are actually active in ministry, and so um, we want to pour into the kids this morning and just recognize that sometimes we're in a battle, and we know what to do when we get in a battle, but the kids need our covering, right? And so I just want to, um, all the all the parents and the children to come up, and we're just going to speak a blessing and a covering over our children. Um, sometimes the children are even more sensitive to the things in spirit that are going on in the world right now, and we just need to recognize that and acknowledge that, and let's just pray a blessing over them. And I would like the dads to just to anoint their children. Yeah. Nothing creepy. Don't be embarrassed to come up, or the moms, any dads or moms. Just pass that around. And we're just going to speak, because, you know, we are supposed to speak blessing over our children. And so we are very blessed to have some beautiful kids here at we the are. Ark. Come on. Yeah, we're, we're, and I'm looking forward to what the Holy Spirit can do with these kids and their lives. We got some more coming from the nursery. We don't want to forget anybody. So we'll give them a minute. <laughs> I, think, I think he's getting her. Oh, <laughs> all right. Yep, yep. Yeah, and that, like I said, the this is our future, right? It is. And this is our this, this is, is our future. yeah, <laughs> yes. This is our blessing in our households every day and our future. And I'm excited for each and every one. And we have some really pretty ladies over here. Okay, and Emily, you get in here too. Yeah, yeah. Now, real quick, look around. This is the future. Mm-hmm. And so, you see how many kids are coming in? We've been praying for that. We, yeah. want, we want it to be a place of families, mm -hmm. family worship, family yeah. togetherness. Yeah. So, you can see God's answering the prayers. Yes, Amen. yes. All right. All right. Everybody get that oil passed around. Get some oil on you, man. Okay. Just slather it on there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Lord, we just thank you. We feel so blessed and honored that you would give us the children. You say that they are our true riches and our true blessing. And, Lord, we honor that in this place, Lord. And we just pray a holy covering over them, Lord, in all that they lay their hands to do in their school places, in their yards, even at home. Lord, we just pray a holy covering even as they sleep at night. Lord, we know that you are the one that guards our hearts. And, Lord, we know that there are times when we just need to recognize and so right now we're recognizing that you are their covering and we ask for the anointing yes. of the Holy Spirit to touch our children, to give them that quickening. May they have ears to hear you, yes. Jesus, when you call to them and you speak to them. May they learn in this place how to honor you and glorify you, that you would truly, richly bless their lives. We speak life over every one of these children. We speak abundance over every one of these children. We speak precious Holy Spirit gifts over every one of these children and we thank you for them and we give you all the glory and all the honor and we thank you thank amen you, well jesus said suffer not the little children unto me so these are like the kingdom of heaven so when you see them their blind innocence and their faith that's how we're supposed to be amen well i'm you but i feel good today man this is fun you know it's kind of fun not having a program you know we're just gonna let god be god amen I will say this. I hope you're ready today to get your minds blown. Yeah. Anybody here want to get your minds blown? Yeah. About four or five of us. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to teach you some things today that will make your life totally successful. It'll be prosperous and successful wherever you go. It's really simple, but it's not so simple. You know, that's one thing about the Word of God. It's really easy, but it's not so easy. That's one, one thing about being, being born again. It's easy, but it's not easy. You know what I mean? 
So real quick, I'm just going to pray over this word this morning. So Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, to prick our minds, prick our hearts, make this real to us, oh God. You are the Logos. You are the very word itself. So God, make this word uh, active and living in our lives this morning. Lord, may you change every heart and may you open up our ears to hear. May you open up our minds to gain understanding and may you open up our spirit to receive revelation that'll be life-changing and that, Lord, we can touch you and your throne because you made the way for us to the Holy of Holies. So we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the victory today and we thank you for these beautiful children. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. So talking today about the imagination. Wow, you can go a lot of places with imagination. How many of you remember as a kid, imagining you were, I know when I was a kid, I used to sit on this tree limb and I thought it was like I was on a ship and I was like a sailor on a ship. Or how many of you imagined playing cars and you were on a racetrack and, and that kind of thing? I'm talking about a guy point of view. I don't know what girls imagine, if anything, I don't know. But, uh, but you know, an imagination is a powerful thing. Would you agree? It's very powerful. And let me show you how powerful it is. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7. This is just going to be our, our kind of our feature verse today. As usual, I have a lot of verses for you. But uh, Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As you imagine who you are, that's who you are. Did you hear what I said? Whatever you think you are, you will become. So when you think... Negative things about yourself, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm ignorant, I can't do this, I can't do that. Then you become that. And so we have a generation of people who have no self-worth. They have no self-desire because in their minds they think they're worthless. And so because they think they're worthless, they become what? Worthless. And so the imagination is a very powerful thing because as you think, so you become. And so you, it, it tells me that the most important thing you can do in your journey is to think correctly. Imagine correctly. Meditate correctly. Because then you will become an unlimited potential. A blank canvas. You can literally do anything you want to do. You can be anyone you want to become. I know it sounds a little new agey. I know it sounds a little like, ooh, but guess what? The church hasn't taught it, but so, the, so Scientology teaches it. The church hasn't taught it, so philosophy teaches it. The church hasn't taught it, so the world grabbed a hold of it and tried to pervert it and say you can do all things by yourself. But the Bible says I can do all things through Christ. So with the right mentality, you can do whatever it is he said you can do because the word of God says I can be who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. So there's a little faith aspect there. But the power of imagination coupled with faith and an understanding of who I am in Jesus Christ is literally how I manifest things in my life. People are like, oh, it just must be lucky to have, you know, rich parents or people that take care of you. It's like, no, we didn't have that. It wasn't easy. But when I started setting my priorities and started focusing on God and I started realizing that I can do anything he says I can do, then he puts the desires in your heart to be who he says you can be. And when he does that, you can do anything he says you can do. Do you hear what I'm saying today? It's going to be deep. I'm telling you, we are going for a home run slammer today. So, so, but I promise you this, it will change your life forever. There's not many words you get in church that will change your life forever. I don't remember too many sermons. How many of you guys remember some great sermons? How many of you remember 10 sermons from the past? Hallelujah, one. You have a blessed mind, young lady. <laughs> Savannah's like, I do. Amen. You are blessed. Blessed and highly favored. And, uh, but most of the time, you don't really remember sermons, right? Because they're not really that meaningful. It's like someone up here going, mom, 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 and then you go home and have lunch. That's what we've made church. But there's more to it than that. It's about life-changing principles that make you dynamic in every situation. It makes you dynamic at work. It makes you dynamic at home. And it makes you dynamic in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because you can do anything he says you can do. So Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. Let me say that again. This is Albert Einstein, one of the smartest men ever. 
Imagination is everything. Now, if Albert Einstein says something, I'm probably going to listen to it, right, Jim? <laughs> He's a smart guy. And so, and I say this because Jim studies philosophy. He'll know exactly what, what I'm saying today. And uh, it says, it is the preview of life's coming attractions. Everything in the future, your future starts with today. <laughs> Pretty deep, right? You, you were like, oh, the Lord laid out my life. No, you lay out your life. He's given you the ability to do it. When you lay out your life according to the word, this is Jesus. When you lay, lay out your life to this, then what happens is you're in alignment with heaven. And so you're always on the right course. You're like, God, am I doing okay? He's like, you're doing fine. I'll tell you when you're not. <laughs> You'll know when you're not. <laughs> Life has a way of checking, checks and balances. It's like, it's like smack, smack. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, you're right. I got off track here. I got to get back on track. But the beauty of Jesus is that you can always get back on track. Amen? So no matter how far you went off, you can come back on today. So it doesn't matter. There's no condemnation. There's no guilt. There's no shame. So everything that is manufactured today, everything that is built today is built on somebody's imagination. Somebody had to imagine it so it could be built. You have to think it to see it. And so it's interesting that we kind of limit our imaginations and we make fun of it like a fairy, like for kids. Oh, you're just imagining things. Wait, I'm getting deeper with this. It's going to go super deep today. So the definition of imagination, let me just put that up there so we can get kind of to the, I want you to have a ground level deal. And I don't want to make up words. I use the definition on Google. Okay, because Google, everything's true on Google. So <laughs> the act of forming, this is imagination. The act of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. It's something non-seen that you're imagining, something that you can't see or touch, you're thinking it. Creative ability. That's how things are created. Aaron, you know what I'm talking about. For music and stuff, this is what you do. Ability to confront and deal with a problem, resourcefulness. That's the definition of imagination. So real quick, I wonder if you would just help me out this morning and if you would just close your eyes for a minute. I just want you to close your eyes. We're just going to think about Jesus now, right now, I want you just to imagine your mind heaven and what it looks like to you. It's obviously going to have some golden streets, some beautiful buildings. Now, imagine if you would a golden throne, and on it is the Lamb of God, but he's just white. He's brilliant. You can barely even see him right now. But you know that when you're entering this area that you can feel the presence of God. Now, how many of you in your mind could see that? You can go ahead and open your eyes. I could, but some of us? Okay. So what you're doing, your imagination is creating. But what we did just now is we created an encounter. Because what happens in your imagination, you start to bring into reality. So when you think on these things, so a lot of times in the prophetic, you'll see something in your imagination. I'm going to help a few people here today. And what happens is that is something that will start to come into reality. That's the spirit of prophecy. But see, imagination is your equipment for your life to do great things in your life. You're limited only by your imagination. So like I said, it sounds a little new agey here. If you thought it was new agey now, wait until we get a little deeper here in just a second. Now, I wrote this down, and uh, this is just to me. But when people are depressed, and like I said, this is, just, this is just revelation to me. It may not even be accurate, but it sounded really good. Depression is the suppression of imagination. Because when you're depressed, you can no longer imagine things. You just take it at face value and say, this is what it's going to be. You lose the ability to imagine yourself in a better place when you're depressed. Because the very word depressed means to be pushed down, suppressed. 
And so depression is the suppression of imagination. There is no joy, no dreams, no goals. It depresses and suppresses the gifts inside. So the gifts you have inside are born out of imagination, not your imagination, God's imagination. He gave those to you already, and sometimes you think, man, I really feel like I have the gift of healing. Well, it's not your imagination. You just keep focusing on that, doing those things, and it will come forth in your life. Amen? Okay, it's kind of deep, I know. Imagination is a facet of who God is. God created by the word and imagination. He created the universe. He had to think of it first. He had to think of you first and said, boom, here's the world. Here's the universe. Here's the sea. Go this far, no farther. Hmm, what else am I going to do today? Let's make some flowers. Here's the plant life. Here's the trees. Here's the herbal things and the remedies and all the things that we need here. God has imagination. And since you're created in the image of God, you also have imagination. You also have creative ability. Now, you can't create, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you could. But, I mean, I haven't seen people be able to create something out of nothing. That's a God thing. <laughs> it's called bara is the Hebrew word. means out of nothing. And so God can create out of nothing. You can't. But you can take something to make it into something else. Amen? With the imagination. So part one, and I'm going to put this on the deal here. This is going to be a, this is about the law of attraction. Now, I know it sounds new agey, and I get it but I'm going to turn it into the Word of God. I'm going to show you how it actually belongs in the Word of God and how philosophy turned it into a worldly thing. So number one is the law of attraction. Number two is the law of asking. Now, does this sound familiar? Ask and you shall receive. And that's creating. Number three is the law of allowing. A lot of times we will not allow God to do good things in our lives because we don't feel like we're worth it. We feel like we're not good enough. We feel like we didn't earn it yet. We feel like we're just not there yet. We're just not ready yet. And so we, we miss law three and the law of allowing it to happen. So part of your imagination is attraction. What that means is whatever you think on starts to come to you. Now that happens good and bad. Whatever you dwell on starts to manifest in your life. As a man thinks, so he is. And so what happens is, if you think yourself as poor, this is real common. Did you know that the poverty mentality is neurons in your mind that are actually made connections to, that you're hardwired to believe that? And did you know that you can change the neuronic path in your mind? That when you think on things, it changes who you are because your mind is so brilliant God created that it forces new networks. It, you know, you've seen people with strokes build new networks. With brain damage, build new networks. The mind is amazing. And I say that because God gave us a mind to use. He gave us all these things to use, but we just kind of put it down and be like, well, no, I don't want to do that, or I don't want to do this, or I can't do this. And the fact is that you have to believe it. You have to ask for it. Ask and you shall receive and then you just allow it to happen. Now, like I said, that happens good and bad. So let's see what the Bible says about that. That was my new age part of it. Now we'll go all scripture, okay? <laughs> my wife's looking at me like, where are you going with this? I don't tell her. I don't tell her what I'm preaching until I get up. She doesn't want to hear it. She goes, I don't, just surprise me. Surprise me. I said, that is a cop out. That is, she's like, surprise me because I don't want to hear you right now. <laughs> so I'm surprised. <laughs> she's like, eee. <laughs> Jesus. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said right here, he goes, what do you mean if I can? It's about healing. Jesus asked, he goes, anything is possible if a person believes. Now, this is the word of God spoken by Jesus. He said, anything is possible if you believe. Anything. What do you need today? Do you need a healing? Do you need finances? Do you need an idea? Do you need a new job? Do you need, you know, what do you need? Because everything's available to you. And I'm telling you this because, A, we're a family, and there's not very many of us, so that's cool. <laughs> B, I don't know if I want to preach this at a conference. But, <laughs> but B is that we all have needs. And there needs, your needs, you need, you are foundational. 
You need to have everything you need so you can be able to pour out into others. And so nobody should be struggling in the body with any issues. So, so where does this come from? How about the Tower of Babel? Anybody hear about the Tower of Babel? Let's just read that real quick. It's Genesis 11. I use this a lot because this is where you see how powerful unity is. This is where you see how powerful imagination is. This is where you see how powerful it is when all the people are one. They can do all things. And this is God himself saying this. So at one time, not right here, but you know, we'll get there. <laughs> at one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. Verse 3, they began saying to each other, let's make bricks. Now remember, they said to each other, they had imagination right here. They said, I have an idea. Let's make bricks and harden them with fire. Good idea, right? Modern houses today are still made out of bricks thousands and thousands, 4,000 years later. Maybe 6,000 years later. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone, and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, listen, come, this is their idea, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. So they had two ideas here that everyone rallied behind. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united. Now, that's, a, that's interesting. He said, God said, look, the people are united. Now, listen to what he said. And they all speak the same language. So they had a common, you know, thread in, in them there. They can all I, communicate with each other. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. So what is that? I mean, I just read that. And I'm like, hey, if you have an idea and you're unified in your idea, then nothing can stop it from happening. <laughs> Only you can stop you. You'll say, no, I got stopped by the government. <laughs> okay, if you're doing something bad, maybe that's it. But, but if you're, if you're, if you're in, the, in, in the word of God, and you're just, God put a desire in your heart, and you're doing it, nothing can stop you but you. And so he said, and this is when he came down, he said, come, Let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. How many know that when you can't communicate with somebody, it's hard to get together on a topic? But here we are speaking the same language. And that way the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel because that's language. Because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. And this way he scattered them all over the world. The imagination starts a creative process called manifestation. Now we hear that, that word a lot. We use it a lot. But what does that word actually mean? The first records of the term manifest come from the mid-1300s. This is Google, by the way. It ultimately comes from the Latin manifestus, meaning detected in the act, evident or visible. Manifest means something that is unseen from the imagination or the thought comes into the physical reality. That is manifest. Now, this is where I'm, I'm going to tie all this together, so just stick with me. Uh, the word manifestation, let's look what that means. It means to create something or turn something from an idea into a reality, a thought into tangible, something you can touch, something you can see, something you can hold. From an idea into a reality, in psychology, manifestation generally means, this is, and this, like I said, this is Google, <laughs> it means using our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs to bring something to our physical reality. Our thoughts, our feelings, or our beliefs. Now, real quick, just leave that up there, because I want to just look at, this wasn't in my notes, but I see three things I really want to key in on. Thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. Our thoughts, as a man thinks, so he is, right? But the problem is we have feelings. <laughs> and a lot of times we dictate who we are by our feelings. And that's a problem because we use how we feel we are or how others perceive us us to be as a basis for how we should feel. And so what happens is this is where it really messes a lot of people up because they roll off their feelings. When people get angry, guess what? It's because their feelings, right? You get your feelings hurt and you get all red-faced, 
You get ashamed. It's feelings. The problem with feelings is feelings manifest into thoughts. And thoughts manifest into reality. As a man thinks, so he is. If you let your feelings control your mind, then your mind manifests those feelings into existence. And then you have a self-done existence that you actually messed up yourself. It's pretty deep, right? Am I going, is this too, this is like too much. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like, man, we're going to another level, and I feel like half of us are like, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Break it, baby, break it. <laughs> well, this is important because we're in an age of offense. <laughs> This isn't in my notes. I'm just telling you that that word feelings, that's where we get offense today in church. Everyone's offended about something. I'm offended he said that. I'm offended she did that. I'm offended they didn't shake my hand. I'm offended they didn't thank me for the hard work I did setting up those chairs. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. (laughs) I'll stop that, honey. (laughs) She loves when I serenade her. (laughs) <laughs> loves it, loves it. Not as much as I do. <laughs> Hurts my feelings. <laughs> no one can hurt your feelings more than a spouse. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> the problem is, is, is what we think, what we feel, and what we believe is who we become. So there's a three areas that we have to take captive of. When, when, when he says take captive of every thought and imagination, we have to take captive of those things because sometimes it comes from the outside, sometimes it comes from the inside, and sometimes it comes through the eyes, and sometimes it comes through the ears. We got to guard the gates. We, let to, we, we, we keep the gates wide open to things that we should not be. And then what happens is once it gets in, it becomes an idea. This is how pornography works. Once it comes in, it becomes an idea. Once it becomes an idea, it starts to become something that you're manifesting into your life. And usually it's a trail of wreckage. And so, so we got to keep the gates closed. The eye gates, the ear gates. Got to be, st- we got to check what's coming in and, uh, and what we're allowing in our lives. So did you know that the gifts of the spirit can be manifested? <laughs> They're called manifestation gifts in the Word of God. So I'm not like going so far out there. I'm using the Word of God here. Manifestation is in the Word of God. Manifest, manifest, manifest. These things are manifested. They're brought from nothing into reality. They're brought from a spiritual realm into a physical realm. They're brought from the supernatural into the natural. They're brought from the heavenly into the earthly. So when we get our mind wrapped around these things, we start to gain an understanding of who God created us to be. But the thing is, the world wants you to be ignorant. So it bombards you with Facebook stuff and ads and TV and just things that are not of God because it wants you to be so distracted and so focused. How is it you can go to Facebook and spend 20 minutes all of a sudden? You're like, dude, I just wasted 20 minutes of my life. It's designed. Everything is designed to take your time. Your time is your most valuable resource. And everything is designed to steal it from you. Because if you don't have time, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. If you don't have time, then you're not going to be in the Word of God. Because you won't have time for that either. And then what happens is, you become what you think on. And so you're not in the Word of God. What are you thinking on? Everything else. And then all of a sudden, you become that. And it's easy to do. I do it all the time. I'll start thinking about cars, and cars will manifest in my life. I'm like, shoot, i got to be more careful about that. Seriously. <laughs> and it don't take long anymore. It used to take a long time. I'd have to, like, dwell on it for a long time. And I'd dwell on it for, like, 10 minutes. And it's like, oh, shoot, I just got that. Dang. <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> yeah, well, my point being is that when you get to a point where you have so much faith that you believe what you think becomes reality, then what happens is what you believe, what you believe becomes reality. So then you got to be really careful because if whatsoever is trustworthy, true, noble, praiseworthy, good, think on these things. Problem is, whatever is not trustworthy, whatever is not good, whatever is not praiseworthy, if I think on those things, that manifests in my life. And this is important. This is why the church is erect today. Because the church does not believe that they have to maintain a line of standard of holiness. And so what happens is they let everything in and they believe they can filter it out and still live a godly life. You can't because the bad will manifest just as much as the good. 
It's a narrow road to heaven, and very few find it. And the reason why very few find it is because you have to be committed and say, I want the good things. But I can promise you this, that road is a good road to be on, and it's a worthy road, because when you understand that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, then what happens is when I start to think on things, and they're godly things, they're trustworthy, they're noble, they're good, they're, they're praiseworthy things. When I think on those things, they manifest in my life, and then when they manifest in my life, other people praise the Lord for what's happening. Amen? So we have to get to a point where we're thinking on the good things and not the bad things. We're going to have to shut some things off. There's about to be a massive movement out of Holy Spirit. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how it is. But I can tell you it's coming. We haven't seen revival for 20 plus years. The nation is ripe. Everything, when you see our government and the leadership and these kinds, it just cries out. Just everything is corrupt. There's not, you can't believe anything anymore. So it forces us to go back to the word of God because you really can't believe anything anymore. But 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11, this is what I really want to get into. I went all that to get into the gifts of the spirit because you can manifest the gifts of the spirit and we need the gifts of the spirit in church. Amen. We need everybody using the gifts. We need you because you were created with them. And let me, let me tell you this, the manifestation gifts aren't gifts you have to earn. They aren't gifts that maybe you're even born with. They're manifestation gifts because you think about it and it becomes out of you. Because you call it from the supernatural into the natural. Manifest. So 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but is the same God who works all in all. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the spirit. I'm just going to pause right there. The manifestation of the spirit. We all pray it. We all want it. But how bad do we want it? Because what happens is when you, when you call in the Holy Spirit, then there's a new standard of righteousness that comes into your life. There's a level of holiness that you can't deny. There's a standard of right living that you have to follow. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is so holy that when he comes inside you, he makes you holy. And so what happens is, is, is your, whole, your mind is enmity towards God because if your mind's not made holy, then it, what it does, it conflicts with the holiness in your spirit. And so now you're unequally yoked in yourself. And you become tormented. And you're like, why isn't everything working out for me? And it's because you're not aligned. You're out of alignment. Like driving a car with a bad alignment. It's like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's how your life is going to be out of alignment because you've got to get the mind lined up with the Lord. You can't do two different things. You can't serve two masters. And so the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. The gift that's inside of you is for everyone's profit. So when you hold it in, you're causing people to not be profitable because people need to see your gift. And I know sometimes it's, I don't like being up here. This isn't my dream. I mean, I'll be honest, I am not really cut out for preaching. I'm just doing it because this is what I'm supposed to do right now. But the fact is, is that I'm just using the gift. And the gift may change to something else. You need to use your gift. It doesn't matter how embarrassed you are or how shy you are, because that's just pride. Because that's saying, I care about what people think about me and not what people think about God. So when you get rid of the pride, then what happens is, then all of a sudden, you walk in humility. And I'm not talking about that, you know, fake stuff, that false humility. I'm talking about, you just, you're like, when I come up here, I just trust on the Holy Spirit. I have no other choice. So I'm like, Lord, just have your way. Lead us the way you want to go. And so you have to do the same thing with the gift inside you because other people need that gift. And when you hold it into yourself, it's selfish. And so for, to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the workings of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things. 
and he distributes them to each one individually as he wills. He is looking for someone that wants to be a willing participant in the kingdom of heaven. It says, I want to do the greater things like Jesus did. I want to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I want to cast out devils. I want to see the dead raised and cleanse the leper. I want to do the things that Jesus did. He's looking for a few people to get a hold of this thing today so he can use you in a mighty way, but you can't be double-minded because a double-minded man is unstable in all he does because as a man thinks, so he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to get this because right now there's no more time for double-mindedness. Jesus is coming soon. There's a lot of stuff happening. The world's changing really quick. We're going to digital currency. You know, the Fed now wallet's starting to open up. They, you know, it's not right this minute for CBDC, but it's coming where we're going to have a central bank uh, digital currency in America. And once you cut off your cash, you're going to be tracked for everything you do. If that's not in Revelation, I don't know what else is. So that doesn't tell you that we're coming up into a season, then you're not understanding the word of God. But it's all unfolding before our very eyes. And he needs you today. He needs your gifts today. He needs your willingness today. But you have to say, Lord, it's going to be you. I'm going to focus on you. And so the gifts, these gifts right here, if you notice that they manifest from the spiritual into the physical. He said these are manifestation of the spirit. They manifest into the physical realm. And Jesus made a way for us to be sons and daughters with complete access to both the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. We have access as a child of God. You have been given exclusive access to the kingdom of heaven. People that aren't believers cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You can right now. I'm not talking about in your death. I'm talking about in your life physically because you can access the heavenly realm by what you meditate on. What you manifest through your mind will manifest from the heavenly into the earthly. And like I said, I know that sounds like maybe prosperity be gospel. Or like, yeah, you know, whatever a man thinks he is. And just, uh, you know, speak these things and believe and they come in. But the fact is, they do. I'm not a real big prosperity gospel proponent. But the fact is that God wants you to prosper. <laughs> and right now he needs some people that will finance the kingdom of heaven. So right now it's been us. I think it's your turn. <laughs> But I'm telling you from experience that God has blessed us and that I'm living this. So you're not listening to someone who's bankrupt. You're, you're listening to someone who knows how to manifest things through the word of God. And I'm not saying that like in pride. I'm just saying it just works. It's what it is. It's a principle. It's a law of attraction. It's a law of asking. It's a law of sowing and reaping. It's all these laws that God put in place. But when you follow the law uh, that he gave you, then you'll get the results. Because it's basically, it's, it's do this and you'll get this. It's not like, well, if you're good enough. Done at the cross. You're all good enough. Congratulations. Y'all you all receive grace. <laughs> grace to do all things through Christ. So, uh, so Galatians. Actually, wait, let's go to Philippians real quick. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. So now listen to this. This is our access to the heavenlies. Galatians 4, 4 to 7. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. But when the time, I have to read really loud because it's amplified, sorry. But, but when the time, my wife just like, stop it. I'm just, I'm just annoying her today, but don't go by your feelings, baby. It's good. <laughs> but when the time arrived that was set by God the Father, God sent his son, born among us of a woman, born under the conditions of the law so that he might redeem of those who have been kidnapped by the law. Thus we have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives crying out, Papa, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation, let me just say that again. He wants us to be intimate. God is not a God who says, serve me or die. He wants a relationship. He's an actual father. He's a Papa. He's a daddy. He wants, he wants to communicate with you. He doesn't say, do this or else. He says, do this because I want you blessed. Do this because I've given you ways to defeat the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the enemy. I've given you a plan and strategy. Follow my plan and strategy and it will go well with you. I want to have a relationship with you, sons and daughters. That's who we are, right, Nathan? 
And so doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave? If he wanted a slave, he would have made his angels. He wanted a relationship with every one of us. That's how important every one of you are. We mean so much to God that he just wants to come to know you intimately. He does, don't worry about your faults. Don't worry. You're not hiding nothing from God. Just come. And so if you're a child, you're an also an heir. Now, we probably don't understand that as much in this country, but in a king, you know, when the king died, you know, the children inherited the throne and all the, the fortunes of the palace, the treasury and everything became the children's. Well, he's saying the exact same thing. You're a child and an heir. We don't have to wait. Jesus already died. So we already have the access. See, when he died, then we became the heirs. At first, Jesus was the heir. But then he died, made us the heirs. He resurrected back to life. He's at the right hand of the Father. Now he's interceding for you on your behalf. And with complete access to the inheritance. What is the inheritance of heaven? It's everything. Everything you can imagine is yours because you have the rights as the child of God. But it has to line up with the word of God because as a man thinks, so he is. And if you're thinking on whatever, if you're thinking on things that are not praiseworthy, not trustworthy, not noble, not good, then you'll become that person who you never wanted to be. And that's the devil's greatest trick today. He uses feelings, he uses emotions, he uses tactics that are sneaky and underhanded to get you so sidetracked and into the world that you forget who you are in Christ. Because if he can give, get you to forget who you are, you become no threat. But when you're an heir of the Most High, then you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. When it says you will trample on snakes and scorpions, you will trample on snakes and scorpions. We pray for these kids up here. The, the demonic attacks are real. You know, we do have an adversary of darkness. And he's out to steal, kill, and destroy everyone he can. And he uses the same tactics over and over. And the people in the church fall for it over and over again. Because they take their mind off the prize. They take their eyes off the prize. So you, today, I just want you to get back to the prize what is the prize of your heavenly calling? What is the inheritance of heaven that God wants you to have? Are you living your best life now? Because if you're not, then you're not focusing on the things of God and you're manifesting the wrong things by your thinking. We call it stinking thinking. If you have stinking thinking, that's more Arkansas, stinking thinking. If you have stinking thinking, then it's contrary to the promises of God. John 15, 16 to 17, I'm going to close up. I just want to give you some verses today. I just want you to know that I'm not pulling this out of the, out of the, uh, the philosophical handbook <laughs> or the New Age handbook. This is the Word of God handbook, and uh, they stole it, tried to change it around into all about you thing. And, it, you know, the fact is it is all about you because you, God doesn't have will over you. You have free will. So you have to make the decisions. So John 15, 16 to 17, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. I chose you and appointed you. I chose you before the foundation of the world, and I appointed you to be a kingdom of priests forever, that you should go and bear fruit. How is your fruit today? You can check your fruit. And that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. If you're not walking in love, then you're not walking in Christ. Because, and if you're not walking in forgiveness, then you're not walking in Christ at all. Because God cannot, 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 I can't emphasize enough, he cannot forgive you if you don't forgive others. He said, first, leave your gift at the altar and go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come back and offer your gift. Then I will receive your gift. But if you can't receive, if you can't forgive somebody that offended you or forgive someone that hurt you or forgive someone that did anything to you, your heavenly Father in heaven cannot forgive you. Not because of of, of that he doesn't want to. He can't because you 
you haven't left off the forgiveness. He can't forgive you if you don't forgive others. He gave a very good parable that he said, hey, there was a servant that owed his master a million dollars. And that servant went and, uh, and begged and said, please don't throw me in jail. I don't have your money. And he said, no, I'm going to throw you in jail, you, you wicked servant. You owe me a million dollars. And he's like, no, please don't. Please. He says, fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forgive you that million dollars. And that wicked servant goes out and someone owes him a hundred bucks. He says, where's my hundred dollars? And he throws that person in jail to pay the hundred dollars. And then the master found out and said, you wicked, lazy servant, now you're in jail. That's the story of forgiveness. He cannot forgive if you don't forgive. That's important. Because a lot of people have been hurt in their childhood. A lot of people have been hurt by other people. But you have to forgive. You just have to release. You have to move on. The past is the past. Today is a new day. And so he said... Uh, he said that you should ask that these things I command that you love one another, but the problem is we have to center our mind on the right things and get away from the wrong things. You know, Holy Spirit, he actually told me I could have, I asked him, can I have this? And I asked him before I buy stuff. He goes, you can have whatever you want as long as you don't love it more than you love me. There's a caveat. But when you start to love your possessions, it becomes your idol. That's why I tend to flip everything I've got. Everything's for sale except for my family. I'm like, man, because if, if I loved it, I wouldn't want to sell it. I'd be like, no, you're mine. <laughs> so I just put everything up for sale. I'm like, well, I loved you, Cadillac. You were a beautiful car. You were good to me. I love shifting it. I love this horsepower. But it's gone now. <laughs> Sayonara. Philippians 4, 8 to 9, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate, think on these things. Because as you think on those things, you will cause that to come into your existence. It will, good things will just happen to you because you're thinking about good things. It sounds so easy, but not every, people don't get it. It is so simple. It's like, if you think on good things, good things come to you. If you think on bad things, bad things come to you. And we need to realize that it's a real thing because the power of the mind. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw me in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. We must think on these things. You will manifest what enters your mind. The gates must be guarded carefully. If questionable or terrible things come in through a gate, you will think on these things. As you think, you will manifest these thoughts. Now, not all things are profitable for you. Even though you can have all things, not all things are. Everything's permissible. Not everything is profitable. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. I'm, I'm close up here in just another two hours. And uh, look at. You guys hungry? What? No, come on. This is good stuff. Looking at it one way, you could say anything goes because of, this is the Amplified, by the way, because of God's immense generosity and grace. We don't have to dissect and scrutinize every action to see if it will pass muster. But the point is not to just get by. We want to live well. Who wants to live well? Amen. We want to live well. But our foremost effort should be to help others live well as well. Because that's where the love is. And you're living well, you should be able to help others live well. But kind of, kind of what, I, uh, what principle I use is everyone goes up around me. So in business, I take everyone up with me. I don't, I don't you know, do this and make me rich. I'm like, let's all get good together. That's, that's how we should all be. Everyone around us, your whole family should come up together. And I'm not talking about just your immediate family. I'm talking about your, you know, extended family as well. If they want to come in with you, we should all go up together. Right, Lacey? She's living the dream right now. Not as much of the dream as my other daughter in Florida and Destin. Now, she's living the dream. <laughs> but everyone comes up well. You take everyone up with you. It's not about you. It's about how you can help others rise up. And then 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6, take captive your thoughts. Now, this is pretty cool. This is the amplified version. I'm going to read the amplified and the New King James. Uh, the world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. I like that part. The world doesn't fight fair, but we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have, never will. The tools of our trade are for marketing or manipulation. 
but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. Hello, let me just say that again. They are for demolishing the entirely massively corrupt culture. When we use the tools of our trade that God's given us, the gifts of the spirit that he's put in us, then what should happen? Part of that, uh, part of the, the, the outflow of that gift is going to be for taking down strongholds. It's going to be for removing corruption, taking back governments, taking back school systems, taking back cities. What we've done is we've given up so much that we just say it's just going to be like this forever. What are we going to do? Oh, God, help us. He says, go do something about it. I called you to be a changer, a world changer, a life changer. I've called you to do something about it, but the problem is no one wants to do anything about it because they're waiting for God to do something, and God's waiting for us to do something, and now there's an impasse, and now we watch the corruption go more, 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 more until we don't have any more rights. We say, oh, God, help us. What happened? He said, you never did anything with what I gave you because you wanted it all for yourself. The gifts are to help other people. That's the love of taking the gift and operating in love to somebody else. When I'm up here doing this, I do this in love because I want to see you get it and grow. I don't like to see you struggling. I don't like to see you hurting. I don't like to see you beat down and depressed. That's not good for anybody and it's certainly not good for you. What we want to see is the joy of the Lord in your life. What we want to see is miracles of money coming in your purse all of a sudden and be like, where did that come from? I have no idea. What we want to see is things manifest in your life of God's goodness so you can be a testimony to somebody else because people are watching you and if you're no different than them, then they're not going to want what you have. And in fact, I wouldn't want what you have either. Okay, that was a little tough. Sorry. <laughs> Let's just pause for personal reflection. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> so we demolish the massively corrupt culture and we use our powerful God tools for smashing warp philosophies. Now that's, you know, when you see the law of attraction, it's called the secret. You know, that's a warp philosophy. It's a truth of God, but they warped it into a self-fulfilled word. They've taken the truth of God and they've made it all about themselves so that they don't have to need God or use God because it is a principle God gave us as a human being. But they take it and say, it's about you, it's about you, it's for you, and it's only for you. But here, I'll show you my secret, but I'm not going to give you anything I've got. I'll just tell you about it. But that is a warped philosophy. They, uh, they, and so it uh, tears down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground, clearing the ground, clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. That's pretty good in the Amplified, huh? Let's see what it says in the New King James. Probably not going to be as good. So, for those we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not human. They're not earthly. They're not weapons of here. But they are mighty spiritually in God for pulling down strongholds. We can't use earthly techniques for spiritual results. It's called manipulation. <laughs> manipulation is witchcraft. We use heavenly tools. The imagination is a weapon. The imagination is designed for you. It's a godlike quality of creation. It's a godlike quality of, of being able to think and manifest these things into existence. And it's designed for pulling down the strongholds. It's designed for demolishing arguments. It's, de it's designed to show the world that you are a person of God. And so it casts down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity. Let me say that again. Every thought that you think has to be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. When you think about every thought, you have 700,000 thoughts a day. 500 to 700,000 thoughts. It's a lot of thoughts, right? You have to bring every one into obedience. Pretty much impossible. <laughs> but all things are possible through Christ. So what that means is, if you have a problem bringing your thought into obedience, 
if you're operating by feelings, if you're operating by emotions, if you're operating by offense, if you're operating by these things, then your thoughts are not brought into obedience. When you bring your thoughts into obedience, that's how you check the fruit. If your fruit has an issue and it's kind of, kind of like, you know, a little flat on one side, a little bruised here and there, that's how you t- can tell where your thoughts are and what's happening there. Because your fruit, we're supposed to be fruit checkers. Fruit, we check fruit. You don't, you can't judge people. No, I can tell you by your fruit who you are. I could, I could, you know, you can, five minutes, you can find out who somebody is <laughs> and how they, how they are in Christ. And so we cast down every argument, every high thing that is also against knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So there you have it. We walk, even though we all walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. We war in our imagination. And we call those things in as though they are. By what you're thinking. Because as a man thinks... So he becomes. So now I ask you this. Who do you want to become? Lacey and Joel, you guys can come up here and get your instruments ready. Who do you want to become? Who do you want to be? What are you struggling with that you want freedom from? Who, what do you want to see in the next year? A lot of the time with imagination is we don't imagine. We don't even think about the future. If you don't think about the future, how can you, how can you manifest something glorious into your life if you don't even think about it? But when you start to imagine who you are in Christ, if you start to imagine who you're going to be in three months, six months to a year, start setting goals, think on those goals, they happen because you manifest whatever you think. It's so easy, right? <laughs> but not. But today, let's just uh, let's stand up as they get their, everything ready. I want to, uh, I don't know why that keeps coming down. <sighs> We always, by the way, if you're moving this around, don't bother to lock the wheels down because everything's pretty level. We had some pretty good guys build the building, so <laughs> doesn't need to doesn't need to be locked down. Next week, uh, we're gonna be out of town for a couple weeks, so uh, Nathan's gonna preach next week. Gonna be exciting for that, and then Mike's gonna preach the week after that. So it's gonna be nice. What we want to do is we want to raise people up. We want to give people, you know, help them with experience. We want to bring people that. We all need to be a part of the body, and we all need to do something. (laughs) So you have a gift. Guess what you also have? Opportunity, yo. (laughs) We're going to help you use your gift, and uh, we're going to do it good. But as we close today, let's every head bow and every eye close. Lord God, we just thank you for the power of our imagination. We just thank you, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, a piece of yourself in every one of us. We thank you for the name of Jesus that is our strong tower, our refuge, our great reward. We thank you that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God and that we have an inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. I thank you, Lord God, that right now that strongholds are being torn down in lives, that, Lord, walls that have been built up uh, of anger and feelings of offense are being torn down right now in Jesus' name. The Lord God, that uh, inadequacies and fears are being torn down right now in Jesus' name. The Lord God, that there's about to be a release of ideas, imaginations, thoughts that release finances into your people. Lord, we just pray for God ideas. Lord, we pray for uh, things that are noble, praiseworthy, trustworthy, and true, good. Lord, we want to think on these things. We ask for forgiveness right now of our thoughts. And, Lord, how they've been somewhat of an enmity towards you. Lord, today we want to change the way we think. And, Lord, we're going to need your help to do that, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to manifest your gifts within us. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to align our minds with our spirit. That, Lord, we can be truly one in you. We can be united because when we are then all things are possible. We can do all things. There will be nothing impossible. And Lord God, I thank you for these people today. Lord, they're amazing people. And Lord, I just bless them right now with with financial uh, security. I bless them now, Lord God, with healing in their body. Lord, for anyone who came in today that's not well, Lord, we just decrease strength in their body. We just uh, break off, Lord, pain. We just decree, Lord, just freedom from stiff joints, freedom from, Lord, hearts that are palpitating. 
Lord, freedom from, from any uh, prescription drugs. Lord, we just decree that today, that there's freedom in the house of the Lord. Lord God, I thank you that, Lord, everything that has been brought against your people is now being laid low because our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty for pulling down strongholds. And today, in the name of Jesus, we pull down every stronghold in our lives. We pull down every imagination and we cast it down. Every thought that's not of you, we bring it into submission now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, every demonic thing that has tried to enter our lives, we shut the door in the name of Jesus. Lord God, today, make our eyes pure again. Make our eyes able to see clearly into the spiritual realm as well as the physical realm. Lord God, today let our ears hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let us hear the voice of God calling us, teaching us, and loving us. Lord, today we want to lay it all down to you. We ask for forgiveness that, Lord, we can pick up a fresh slate, that there's nothing in, in, in under, that's nothing that's going to hold us back. Lord God, because everything is under the blood. Lord, for those people that have that have hurt us in the past, Lord, and for the family members, uh, for the abuse, for the things that are, are literally unspeakable, Lord, uh, give the ability to forgive and put it under the blood. And Lord, in that, let there be freedom for the people, Lord God. And in that freedom, may they manifest great things in their lives. May there be a manifestation of uncommon health, a manifestation of uncommon finances, and a manifestation of an uncommon knowledge of the Word of God. Lord, we bless the families. Lord, we bless the family unit. Lord, I know the devil's tried to get to spouses, husbands, and wives and turn things around and twist truths. And Lord, we just bind up that spirit now, that Leviathan spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord God, restore once again the love of a wife to her husband, a husband to his wife or her wife, uh, kids to their fathers and mothers and the fathers and mothers back to their children. Lord, let there be a full time of the restoration of the way things should be. And Lord, I thank you that you're moving powerfully in these days. I thank you for this uh, facility. It's a gorgeous facility, and we thank you for it. And we offer it up to you as our, as our gift that, Lord, you may use it, and you may, Lord, dwell in this place. May every heart now receive an overdose of love and outflow of spiritual gifts being released on the people. Lord, we manifest today those spiritual gifts that you've called forth for the people to use. Gifts of wisdom, words of knowledge, discernment, healing, supernatural faith. Lord, we call those forth right now. And that, Lord God, that what the devil meant for harm is going to be turned around today. Lord, we break the curse. We break the generational curses. We break the hexes, the vexes, the word curses, the spells, everything type of witchcraft has been trying to be brought against the people will fall by the blood. And Lord God, we thank you that there's freedom in the house today. That, Lord God, there's no more strings attached. That your gift comes at the cross of grace. That, Lord God, today by grace we pick it up and we say, Lord, we want to live that life worthy of your name. We want to carry the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Lord, our Savior, the great I am, the one true God. Today we proclaim, come on, just proclaim him today that you're a good God. You're a good God and you give good gifts to your children. So, Lord God, pour out the greater gifts on your children today. Lord God, pour out those greater gifts today. We give you the place. We give you the honor. We give you the glory here, oh God. And I thank you that you're building up sons and daughters, that you're building up heirs of the kingdom, that you're building up the knowledge of the word of God, that it'll be wielded like a weapon, oh God. It'll divide bone and marrow, and it'll divide soul from spirit. That, Lord God, that nothing unclean can stand. That, Lord God, that there be deliverance in the house of the Lord once again. That the power of God would manifest once again. That there be miracles in the house once again. That there would be no offense in Jesus' name, that, Lord, we would not operate by feelings, but by faith. We would not operate by fear, but by faith. We would not operate by what we see, but by what we know, which is the Word of God. So, Lord God, we stand in your Word today, and we claim the promises that are yes and amen through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we sing this last song today, may your power just radiate through the room, and may your glory come down and make the joy of the Lord fill this place. For today is a day of celebration. Celebration. It is a day of new beginnings. It is a day of rejoicing. It is a day of abundance. It is a day of overflow. It is a day of the great unlocking. It is the day of the reconciliation. Lord, I thank you that you're bringing families back. Come on, just praise them a little bit. 
I thank you that you're bringing families back together again. Lord, for those long lost relationships, we bring back restoration, oh God. We bring back, Lord God, our, our brothers and our sisters, our uncles and our aunts, our grandmas and our grandpas. Lord, those things, we bring them back today, Lord God. We put it under the blood. We say we forgive you in Jesus' name as the Lord forgave us. We forgive them. Now, oh Lord, thank you for the fruit that's coming on the people, Lord. May the fruit be abundant in the house of the Lord today. May it be evident to all, including the people of the world. May they see that there is truly a God in heaven who loves his people. And Lord, we rejoice and praise you for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him some praise today. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Because I came here with 